Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to a very long-awaited video. In this week's video, I'm going to show you how to preserve the variegation in a variegated Monstera. Now this can be applied to philodendron as well, but I only have a Monstera here with me to show you guys, but of course you can extrapolate what I'm saying towards a philodendron. I know you guys have been screaming at me for this video, and honestly, the only reason I hadn't done it yet is because I couldn't find a plant that was reverting. But now I have, I have here with me, you may be able to see it in the frame, a less than perfect, shall we say, specimen of variegated Monstera. So as I mentioned before, it can take a little while before your Monstera reverts. It might not revert at all. It might just keep on pumping out variegated leaves. Another one here behind me, I don't know how well you could see on the video here. Obviously I have this rotated in a certain way, Generally speaking, a lot of the leaves look like this, to be honest with you. It's only very recently that this one here, as you can see in the frame, has a leaf with minimal variegation on it. Um, the same node, however, has produced this leaf here with plenty of variegation on it. I don't know how well you can see that there in the frame. This is quite reasonable. So I'm not quite ready to cut back this Monstera, but it's definitely showing signs of, you know, not reversion, but diminishing variegation. So I'm going to keep an eye on this and should, you know, the next leaf come out with less variegation as this, or even the same amount of variegation as this, given the rest of the plant's genetics, I'm probably gonna snip snip and, you know, take some of these leaves off. Before I talk about, you know, and show you how to preserve the variegation on a Monstera, there are a few things I would like to very, very briefly cover. Honestly, I've covered these before, but if you haven't seen the other videos where I mention this, then you may not be aware. I'm talking in this video today about Monstera Borsigiana albo variegata, so the white variegated Monstera. I will say very quickly, this also applies to the yellow version. It does not, however, apply to a Monstera Thai constellation. The Monstera Thai constellation, you don't have to worry about a reduction in variegation or the plant generally reverting. So if you're sat there with a Thai constellation at home thinking, you know, should I cut this? The answer is no. You just got to get out a jail free card so you can sit this one out. You don't have to actually do anything with your plant. However, for us variegated Monstera lovers, we probably do, depending on how your plant is going. I must also highlight not only can a plant go, you know, too green, so to speak, but it can also go the other way and go full elbow. Now, it's important generally when we maintain a balance of variegation in our plants, we look for around about 50-50. So that is 50% variegation and 50% green, basically. Because without the green, we don't have chlorophyll. Without chlorophyll, the plant cannot grow. So as much as you don't want all green, so basically your variegation dies out, you also don't want a full white leaf because that will also just basically just crisp up and die. You can't grow these plants. If you want any more information on variegated Monstera and kind of the pitfalls of it, I do have a video that I will link down below, basically talking about all kinds of things to do with variegated Monstera, such as propagating it, how to go about buying one, the whole shebang. So if you're interested, I will leave that below. Just to let you know that when you make any cuts to your plant, whether that be to propagate it for somebody else or to prune it back or anything, you will stunt the growth a little bit. The growth will return to normal, but your next couple of leaves are not going to be, you know, to the glory of what this is, for example. I might get a leaf that doesn't even have splits. It might be completely juvenile appearing that comes out of the next node. That There's nothing wrong with that. It's just, if you see it happen, don't be alarmed. So if you cut your plant and you're, maybe you've taken a cutting and you're growing a new leaf from a cutting, or perhaps it's just growing a leaf back on the mother plant, you may see stunted growth, you may see leaves without splits. It's absolutely normal and it will return after a while if it doesn't you know, return initially. So when we look for basically what to propagate or what to prune back, what you, what you need to kind of look for is a decline in variegation over time, if that makes any sense. So if I take this plant here, and I'm sorry if you can't see, you know, everything, I can see a little bit on the viewfinder. Obviously, this is a very, very good leaf. This is actually over 50%, so this is, this is a little bit much. It's fine, it's got enough to sustain itself, but future growth could technically become, you know, too white. So that is one to watch out for. However, it has progressed up the plant. This is still on the okay side, we're all right. Again, this, we've reached even more, you know, levels of sectoral, so arguably this is increasing on this side. However, I have a different vine in this plant. This plant, by the way, is actually three smaller plants. That's why it's so bushy. It's not one single plant. 
but this other vine coming from here has a slightly different story to tell us. So here we have some decent variegation. I really hope you can see this. We can have some quite decent variegation here. Then it's it's okay. There's more green, but it's you know it's fading. And then we've got to the point right now where we just have this. So what I would say here is there is a decline happening in the level of variegation. So I could leave it. Don't get me wrong. I could leave it, but it's it's not impossible either. But it's very unlikely that this plant is maybe going to produce more variegation. So there's nothing wrong with waiting to kind of see what happens. But if you're, you know, hypersensitive or you just think, you know what, I'm going to cut this, I'm going to keep it, I'm going to grow it separately, I'm going to let the mother plant grow back. This is probably a time where you might want to do something. As I mentioned before, I'm actually not going to cut this plant today. I'm going to cut this other plant I have right here. So I will try and show you this the best I can. I'm actually going to change uh, camera angles in a minute so I can show you me, you know, cutting it properly. But this is the Monstera that I have. It's a little bit unfortunate. Hopefully I don't do anything with my microphone here. But if I try and tip it towards the camera, you will see here that we start out okay. We get a good level of variegation and then it just, it kind of just stops. I mean, you're not going to see it on camera now. I did take some B-roll that I'm probably inserting for you, possibly anyway. But there is a very, very slim kind of line of variegation going up this stem. So I don't personally think that this is going to produce more variegation. I mean, if you can see this leaf here, I don't know how close I can hold it up to the camera. Is it going to let me? But basically, that's not going to increase. We're now in real danger of losing this variegation. Oh, I'll just pop that on the chair there. So this is definitely an example where you're going to want to cut back and see if we can get some of this beautiful white variegation back. So this is the plant I'm going to be cutting today. As I say, I'm not going to cut my big one. I'm going to give it one more chance with another leaf. Should that diminish, I will probably cut that too. But I mean, I don't know if we've got anything coming out. No. Am I the only person that likes to kind of grope my uh, my petiole to see if uh, there's anything coming out of it? But being that you won't be able to see it, I'm probably going to have to switch the camera up so I can show you properly. So I'm going to do that now. So hopefully you should be able to see things semi clearly. So as I mentioned before, you need to start looking for a decline in your variegation. I will show you once again kind of where we're at with this plant. I'll try and turn around. We started off with some good variegation. I hope you can kind of see that in the frame there. We kept on with the good variegation. Again, I mean, that's not necessarily the right order. I think it probably started with this leaf here because it's more juvenile. Then it's reached this leaf. Then it's reached this leaf here and even this leaf here. But once we reach the top two leaves here, there is a very, very slim sliver of variegation in this stem. I don't know how easy that is to see on camera there. Again, I've shown you B-roll already probably of the situation with this plant. But basically, these top two leaves aren't really useful to us. Now, I'm not saying to chuck them out, you know, throw them away. I'm saying keep them, you know? You can prune back your plants because you think the variegation is declining or it's increasing or whatever, but you could still propagate the bit that you cut away. I'm not saying, you know, get rid of it. So what we're gonna do here, it is the simplest thing in the world, guys. All you gotta do is find a node. If you remember from my other videos, you need a node in order to grow foliage. So a node on this plant here, I'll show you the best I can. Hopefully I can zoom in if, you know, this isn't quite far enough in. This is a node here. There's also a node right here. If I tip that up, you can see a node right there. So in terms of visible, what you can see right now, there is a node here and there is a node here. Now I could cut this node here. Okay, I could. I'll show you the leaf that I'm kind of talking about right now. It's got like a tiny fleck on it. I could cut this off at this point here, okay? But there's not a lot of point because also the node beneath has this growing out of it. So if I propagate it from here, I'm not really doing much good, to be honest. This is still green. You know, the, the variegation in the next leaf produced, it's, you haven't got great chances, have you really? Not only that, I don't have an aerial root here. That doesn't mean that you can't, you know, propagate without an aerial root, but your propagations are gonna be like 10 times more successful if you use an aerial root. So if I look further down, I hope you can see that. I'm gonna have to tilt it. Right here, you can see the next node that also, you know, has this growing from it here. So the next node does have an aerial root. Now that is where I would probably be interested in cutting because once I remove that, we're back to the part of the plant here that, you know, has some variegation. So the next time when the plant grows back, we have a bit of a shot. So 
What I would typically do, again, I think I'm just gonna have to tip it. Let me try and move this back a little bit here. It's not, you know, the best way of showing you, but I'm doing my best, guys. So about an inch under this node here is probably a good place to cut. I think that allows, you know, if, if it starts to rot or something, if we put it in moss and it starts to rot, we can shave a little bit more off and save, you know, the plant from rot should that happen. So if you have, you know, quite large internodal spacing, which basically means the space between these nodes on a Monstera, always cut your cutting and give it some kind of extra room or some extra insurance, if you will. Like, for example, right here, if I'm going to cut this, I'm not going to cut it right beneath the node because one, this is going to callus, so it's gonna produce, you know, some some brown, hard, you know, barky kind of vibes anyway. And it's gonna kind of callus over. There wouldn't be much point cutting it right up here when I could just cut it a little bit further down in order to give this plant more of a chance. It would still need to be rooted up to, you know, here past the node, but generally speaking, if you can leave a little bit of extra stem on, leave it on, if you know what I mean. So the only viable places to cut technically on this plant are here and here. Again, I'll tip it further forward here, right there where my finger's wiggling. But really the best place to cut in this instance would be right here. So I'm actually gonna do that now with a handy little pair of these. So I'm gonna tip it forward so you guys can see. It's probably gonna fall off camera. I'm cutting it here. I can see an aerial root beneath. I don't think you're going to get to see this, to be honest, guys. But there's an aerial root just on the stem. That's kind of useless, but it's kind of beyond the point of where I would cut it anyway. So I'm just going to cut this here. I'm going to leave this root here because it's going to be excellent for propagation. I'm going to cut a little bit below the node just to give it some insurance. So I'm going to cut right here and I'm going to remove it. So right now we can see that our plant looks slightly miserable. It's got a little bit of a stump there. Let's see if I can show you. That little stump there will callus over if you leave it, you know, to air dry, which why wouldn't you on your mother plant? Why wouldn't it air dry? But you need to do the same thing for this cutting here. And this actually counts for just propagating Monstera, let alone preserving variegation. I guess when you preserve variegation, you're kind of doing both anyway, because really, I mean, you could throw this out, but I mean, who realistically is going to? Do you know what I'm saying? We're obviously going to keep it. So make sure that this calluses over, it will give you much more of a chance of success in your cutting. Now, what you could do to let this callus over is quite simply just leave it out. Leave it out in the air for an hour or two. I promise you nothing will happen to this plant if you leave this, you know, on a table or whatever for an hour. As long as it's not in a, you know, in the Arizona desert in 90 degree heat and it's not totally dry. If it's just in a household environment, I promise you, if you leave this on a table for an hour, you're not gonna see any difference in the plant. So just leave it for an hour, let it callus over and let it go a little bit brown. And you can either stick it in water or moss, I prefer moss, to propagate from there. Or you can actually seal the bottom with wax and then pop it in water. Now, a lot of people have asked me previously, you know, well, what kind of wax are you using? Honestly, if you know um, little tea light candles, I just use the wax from those. I set a candle going for maybe about, you know, 40 minutes, an hour, however long it takes. I blow it out and then I dip in, you know, the end, the little nub into the wax and I make sure that it's set, basically. I'm not shy with it and I do kind of seal up as far as I can as well. That should really, really reduce the risk of rot with your cuttings. It's not gonna completely eliminate it, but it will definitely reduce it. So now, even though this plant certainly doesn't look amazing, it's got more of a chance to bring back that variegation. And really, all we have now is a cutting for a friend or a second Monstera for you as well. When you cut yours, I mean, it's quite realistic that your leaves will still be variegated, right? Like mine's kind of off frame now, but the leaf that I mentioned before with like a little chunk of white, that's still a variegated monstera, you know? It's just, it's not necessarily as viable as, you know, your mother plant probably now is. So, I mean, these ones are pretty much green apart from literally like a fleck there. But basically that's all you do to propagate a variegated monstera. Look for a decline, look for a good place to cut it. You don't have to care about aerial roots and everything else if you're not necessarily gonna keep the plant. If you are gonna keep the plant, try and find an aerial root. It will give you a better chance of success with your propagation because these aerial roots are really, really, really tough. So now I can easily put this in a vase of water. I can actually put it in the center of my table. That might look quite nice. And that's that, really. Simples. So that was how to preserve variegation in a variegated Monstera. I guess 
The simple answer is use your judgment, look for a decline, try and preserve a percentage of variegation on your plant. Don't let it get too much where it goes white and don't let it get too, you know, little where it goes green, basically, and you lose the variegation altogether. Because what is the point of having a variegated Monstera if you lose the beautiful variegation? Thank you very, very much for watching. If you've got any suggestions for future videos for me to do, please leave them down below and I will see you next week. Bye, guys.